So one, let's be open. And now if we're open to being mentored, um, would it be fair to say that if I had a real estate background, that some of the skills that I learned as a realtor apply to network marketing, but at the same time, some of the beliefs and skills that I have in real estate don't apply to network marketing and I have to re-educate myself? Um, absolutely. I mean, there's some, I like salesmen in general, when they come into networking, I think so, there are certain things that they've learned, you know, listening to people, et cetera. But one of the things that I found that a lot of salesmen have to unlearn is this whole idea of closing people. Like, I gotta close this person. I gotta put some high pressure technique to get them in. Mm -hmm. Because really, there's never a close in the business. It's always an opening. You're opening up a new relationship. You're opening up a relationship that then opens up their names list and as you're going house to house and building the business. So I think a lot of people think that once they get them in, okay, I got them now on to the next person. But really, you've just opened up a relationship and with the goal of having lifetime relationships. you got a very secure business when your best friends are also business partners. And when you're helping your best friends make six-figure incomes, it's amazing how long that thing that can be because people kind of enjoy making that type of money and they enjoy the relationships they have with you. Mm -hmm. So in real estate, for example, you would have other realtors that you could boss around. That's a little different in network marketing. Or if you're a business owner, you might say, oh, this network marketing, that's going to be so easy because I'm just going to treat my first couple of people I sponsor as employees. But guess what? That's where we might need a little bit of mentoring. What other areas will we, should we be open to? Um, finding somebody to mentor us in. I, I, when I first got into getting a mentor, um, I picked mentors in a few different ways. Mm -hmm. One way would see that I would see that somebody had a specific skill in an area, and I would say I would like that person to become my mentor. And, and sometimes you don't always have to actually physically meet that person to ask them to be your mentor. It's allowed to go and read their book first, listen to their tapes, listen to any live class you can get, and eventually you can get to the mentorship where they actually take responsibility for mentoring you. So I think it starts with you wanting them to mentor you. And just, just to say that the tapes, the book, so if you find a book, that is actually a form of mentoring by Absolutely. reading that book, right? So when we say mentoring, it doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. Great point. Okay. So, so that's, that's a skill. But then I also believe that mentorship comes into like a personality type, mentorship goes into character, mentorship goes into actually every single area of your life. Like I've got a mentor which I haven't officially like said, do you want to be my mentor? Because I know there is some areas in his life where I don't want to take on everything that he's got. But on the wealth side, he's got what I want. So when I go to study and get mentored in wealth, I go and see this person and I see how he acts, I see how he reacts, I see how he thinks greatly about what he is doing, what he is telling the people that work with him, and he becomes a mentor to me because he's a person that have already gone down the track or walked, climbed up the mountain, already know all the things that I want to know, and I can tap into his resources and kind of get the downloads that I need so that I can go the same path. Mm. But then some other people could be mentors in a relationship. They don't necessarily need to have all of that wealth, but they have that relationship that I really dream about having. And I've got several couples across the world that has that mentorship and relationship area. And then eventually my main mentor, always I try to find a person that is the equal to what I want on all areas, so a holistic approach to everything. But of course, in the beginning days, I didn't find all of those right away. So yes, I got mentored early on, but I also did my share of mistakes. Uh, because it wasn't like I got the dream, I found a mentor and I had all the success I could dream about. But I got a dream and I found a mentor and I got to a lot of, lot of, lot of struggle, fight, uh, where I failed terribly. And in that, and this may be the most important part of having a mentor. I had somebody that trusted in me and believed in me that I could go and ask for advice. And they'll give me that just little new direction that I couldn't see. And I could 
propel on and get to the next harbor. Mm -hmm. Oh, we were talking about Tony Robbins just earlier, and then mm -hmm. Jim Rohn was that man who believed in Tony just enough to say, Tony, you have greatness in you, and, and of course, Tony went on to do some amazing things in his life there. Um, you know, I'm looking at the both of you and I'm thinking, well, relationships, you know, I love the Lori and Oren, your relationship and the battles that you've gone through and the love that you have in your family. And your family's here in Oslo today and um, you and Hilda, of course, have been in an amazing relationship since you guys got together. So I'm looking at two mentors on the relationship side. Um, fortunately for me, it's also on the money side. So there's two areas checked. So as you're listening to this thing, yeah, I'd love to have a 50-year marriage or a 100-year marriage or a marriage that you know ended up like John Wooden where his wife passed away and he wrote her a love letter every week until he died just this year. Mm -hmm. um, then find somebody that has great relationship in that area, but maybe they just are terrible about their finances, so don't take advice from them on finances. But maybe the financial person, like you have a you know, friend of yours, and I'm not saying that his relationships are messed up, but if they've been through seven divorces, Hey, just ask them about finances. How easy is it to find somebody that's got all of it? I mean, you mentioned that that's your key mentor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got all of them to a certain limit. Okay. limit. I mean, so we're I'm, not going to look for a perfect I, person. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking at one now that is close to the perfect me, Mr. Owen Woodward over here, uh, which I was amazed with first time I met him because he had that gravitational pull that immediately as I came close to him, I thought that I gotta get closer to this person. I want this person in my life as somebody that can influence me. And that's the first step, I think, that you want somebody influencing you. And then maybe mm -hmm. down the road that could become a mentorship. But then I was looking to, okay, so I want him to influence me, maybe become my mentor. So what do I do to find that mentor? Because that's always the question I get. People come to me and say, that, how do I find my mentor? Uh, what, where do I find him? Where do they hide? <laughs> like, like, what do I have to do? And, and, and the first thing that you do when you want to find a mentor is that you want to know what they like. So, when you can research what they've written, what they've said, you talk to their friends, you listen to their tapes, and you find out, like, like what do they like? So, in that process, you kind of also find out those different areas of their life that, okay, check one, good relationship teaching, okay? So who is relationship? Okay, they can evaluate that they have a solid relationship. Who is the finances? Who is the business area? Uh, it, it, I, I was to a leadership class where um, uh, a person was talking about getting people and employed. Like, how do you get a good employee? And he said, well, the first thing I checked for is that they really terribly failed one time in their life and then stood up again. Because otherwise they haven't built any character. So check that off. Like, have they gone through some stuff or are they just about to get into trouble? <laughs> uh, and then when you've gone on through all of those areas, you'd see, okay, who do I know that know that person? And that's you, that Art, that have brought me so many of my mentors because Art knows everyone. <laughs> So, <laughs> He's a networker so, of networking. <laughs> amazing. I, 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 I don't understand why I have time to get to know everyone, but it's incredible in that area. So then you check on that and then you start just forming those relationships. And a mentorship always starts on the premises of the mentor. It never starts on your premises. And that was the first thing I learned was that I can't get anybody to mentor me if it's going to happen my way. So the day I let go of that and it was going to happen the way the mentor wanted to mentor me, mm. then it was easy to get mentors into my life because I was all about serving them. And when I serve them, they think it's exciting to have you around. Amen. Yeah, and that, Goran, that goes back to, you mentioned, I think, humility. That at some point we have to be open to, to learning, which involves humility. So the humility to you, what does that look well, like? Well, that there's a saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And Orion, I think you're saying, you know, at some point you're like, man, I am looking. And when you, it's like, it's almost like you're sending out a, a radio signal that people are picking up and they can sense that hunger. And uh, I think it's a joy mentoring people. I mean, and I can think I can speak for a lot of other 
people that when they're accomplishing great things, man, they're learning so many things and they're amazed sometimes at how few people want to learn some of the things that they're learning. So it's exciting when you find somebody. I can, I can promise you there are plenty of uh, churches where the pastors learn incredible things and are wondering how come the congregation doesn't want to, you know, learn some of this stuff. And, you know, a businessman is uh, achieving success and is amazed how many people are just fine with just working a nine to five and going home versus staying late and being able to talk to the uh, the boss or talking to the owner and trying to understand how he's thinking and seeing things. And so in your own business, and why I love networking so much is the people that are further down the road actually get paid to help the new hungry student. Mm -hmm. So man, if you are getting started and you're hungry, then you've got to go out there and do something to get noticed. And, and, you know, I'm not talking about doing something bad to get noticed. I'm talking about go out there and share the opportunity. Go out there and represent your product in a way that people are like, whoa, who is this guy or who is this gal that's out there making things happen? Because this is such a beautiful uh, business for win-win. If there's a new hunger student, and a lot of times they're out there making things happen, but they're messing a lot of things up because they don't necessarily know everything they're doing. But if you if you just get started, get in motion, it's a lot easier to turn or steer a car that's in motion. The, the, it's a near impossible. You can't move a car or steer a car when it's not moving because it doesn't matter what you do with the wheel, it just doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that humility to be hungry, and I tell you, the, the, the teacher will appear if there's a hungry student in networking. Somebody's going to find find you, and then they're going to make that connection, and you, like Orion, like you were saying, is the, the, the student side, you've got to show that hunger and a willingness to serve, and get into, try to find ways that either stand late at meetings, or, hey, can I get you a coffee, what, what can I do to serve you? 